all, this is Halloween, and if you love Halloween and costumes, it's our favorite time of year. I'm gonna be showing you how to create some awesome costumes without breaking the bank, and maybe even using some items you already have at home. In today's episode, we will be recreating the lovely Miss Mae West. She is an old Hollywood film actor who was typecast as a ditzy blonde, very sexual, and she even carried on this charade when she wasn't on camera. She absolutely lived her life as Mae West. Let's get started. We're doing Mae West today. And if you don't know who Mae West is, she was born in 1893 during the height of vaudeville. And she was a vaudevillian. She also went on to be a playwright. And then on to motion pictures, which were called talkies at the time. It was the post-era after silent film. She was this unconventional beauty who just became so much more. And it was all in the way that she delivered her lines. She was smart, she was campy, she was witty, and all of those things created Mae West. This is what we would wear for her. If you're going out as Mae West, you do not want to be without either some kind of furs or ostrich feathers. <laughs> and you do not want to be without jewels. So I have this jewelry set aside that I'm going to be wearing with the, with the costume. I bought this dress from Amazon and I'll put in the description below which dress it was. It comes in all different colors so you don't have to get brown. The only reason I got brown was because I bought this hat here with ostrich feathers. It's exquisite. It's a real vintage. I got it for $6 at the thrift store which was a great find. And I really didn't know what I was going to do with it, what costume I would do with it until probably two weeks ago. I bought this ostrich feather boa online, Amazon. Uh, I've already had these shoes. And if you're going to carry a purse, I would do something, a beaded clutch. You know, something very May West. But that's it. That's the costume. I actually purchased uh, some ostrich feathers too. I just sewed them right onto the sleeves just to add a little more flair. And that's it. Let's get started with our makeup. How you doing? It's time to do some makeup. So today we're doing Mae West. Obviously, you're just gonna need regular makeup for this one. I was going to erase my own eyebrows. Mine are a little more, mine are arched in a different area than hers are. But I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. I was trying and it's not working for me today. So what I'm gonna do for her eyebrows, I've got this very fine brush. I'm gonna take a brown color and I'm just going to do a very thin brow with this dark ember color that I have from the Tarte palette. And I'm just gonna see if I can't. Now her eyebrows weren't real dark either. Her eyeshadow most of the time was darker than her eyebrows. Mae West. What a bombshell. And actually, not in every sense of the word. She was not super attractive by any standards back then. She didn't have the body type of any real sexual or less entertainer back then. She was a little heavier set. She was only five feet tall. She was a very unlikely sex symbol. Her birthday was August 17th, 1893. Just right under my regular eyebrow. Now she got her start in vaudeville. And was performing in vaudeville for some time when the burlesque entertainer started to come onto the scene. And that was who she really was inspired by. But I'm sure some of the slapstick comedians and things like that she was also inspired by. So she actually took those two things and combined them 
and became Mae West because she was known for her line delivery and these one-liners she'd have like the most they were intelligent but yet ditzy but captivating all at the same time and she was known for that she started to become Mae West during the 1930s there it is in 1926, she actually wrote and produced her own play, which was called, in capital letters, S-E-X. We all know what that spells. It came onto the scene as being very taboo. However, it was a box office sensation. And because it was so big, it spurred controversy among the community and everything. And she even ended up going to prison or jail for 10 days. And at that time, she described that time as being a wonderful time in her life, being in jail. Because she was treated like a princess when she was in jail. Like the warden and his wife would take her out to dinner every night. Like, can you even imagine being in jail and like you're being treated as such? It was crazy, but she loved it. She said she had a great time. That's totally savage to me. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm just creating the shape of her brow right now. I have a pencil I'm going to go over it with, brown pencil, because that was just shadow. And I'm going to clean it up using a, uh, using a Q-tip, not a toothpick, a Q-tip. She had a very 1920s appeal to her. It was like the combination of a flapper and a saloon girl. So if you're not really sure what a saloon girl is, you could see them in old westerns and stuff like that, like a can-can. You know, the flair of a can-can girl with the allure of a flapper. She was really awesome. Now we're gonna do the other brow. I'm gonna start with the pencil this time. It was more straight across, let's see. I'm gonna try with my brush <sighs> this is hard work I injured myself I don't know a few days ago I injured myself I conked my elbow on something you know when you hit your elbow it's like your funny bone or something and it hurts for a little bit and maybe even an entire day but then it goes away this has been for like days now i'm like dang did i did i uh break something in there or what it's it's been kind of crazy pain you know so i don't know but in any event it's a joint right so i don't think they could do much about that anyway your joints are like, you just gotta wait for them to heal. Kinda trying to get my own eyebrows out of the way. But that's what her eyebrows looked like. Very similar to that. Very flapper girl. Because she was born in 1893. So man, she got to live during the best times. The gay 90s, the 1920s, like all my favorite eras. What a lucky girl. Now I'm gonna start in with my eyeshadow. And we're going with a darker, smoky eye. She rocked the smoky eye. We're probably gonna do lashes, which I'll do off camera. I'm just going to pat on this sort of dark, this is that ember color that I did the brows with. Now, she'd almost go up to her eyebrow with her eyeshadow. She'd do like a darker color down here on the lid and into the brow just like that and then i'm going to do the other one exactly the same and then we'll go in with the lighter color up top if you want to watch a great documentary on may west there's a documentary on youtube narrated by dom deloise and it's called may west and the men who knew her and it is so good it's such a good documentary to tell you a lot about may west that you probably didn't know or maybe you did maybe you're a big may west fan but she was actually a very intriguing and inspiring woman. She took sexuality, which was very taboo back then. You couldn't even have the same beds if you were a married couple on camera. 
like in the beginning of the film. My how things have changed, but you couldn't be in the same bed, even being a married couple. Anything involving sex was very hush-hush. And she kind of brought that into the spotlight, but in a comedic way. She took sexuality and she made it funny. And she made it inviting and intriguing. And But in such a way that wasn't nasty or despicable. It was classy and it was elegant. And it was intelligent and had a certain flair that only Mae West could achieve. Well, my lights went out. That's okay, we're gonna still keep going. In 1932, Mae West was in her first talkie. If you're not familiar with what a talkie is, in the 1930s, the talkies came out when prior to that, it was only silent film, you know? Up until that point, you'd see silent film. Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and Mary Pickford and all these silent film actors and actresses. And there was nothing but piano or organ accompaniment. And there would flash dialogue on the screen of what was going on here and there between takes. So you'd kind of get an idea of what was happening. But it was interesting because if you watch silent film, you even don't even need that. You can kind of tell what's going on just with their mannerisms and their actions towards each other. It's, um, it's really a cool thing. If you haven't watched any silent films, I recommend The Black Pirate, any of the Charlie Cha Chaplin films and maybe some Buster Keaton films. They were all really good. Even the first vampire movie, Nosferatu, was a silent film. So I've got my smoky eye going. It looks fabulous. Now with my small brush again, I'm gonna go just under the eye. Just kind of line under the eye a little bit. And then I'm going back in with my larger brush. One of my larger brushes here. I'm gonna do like a pinkish, one of these pinkish colors more towards the brow line. I'll go with this one and up all the way and almost to the brow line, we're gonna do that. I don't wanna ruin my, my dark though, so I'm just I'm gonna go back over it a little bit. Yeah. Now I'm gonna do a cat eye. And then I've gotta put my lashes on. I think I'm going to do my waterline as well in black. She had a very heavy smoky eye most of the time. I'm just doing a cat eye, but you can already see see her coming together. I was thinking about doing a hook nose. She had a little bit of a hook nose. Went down a little bit with my putty. We'll see what happens. I had to do my cat eye and my lashes off camera because if you haven't already tuned in before, these things are not kind to me. It's easier for me to do them off camera. So <laughs> it's just a regular cat eye and I put lashes on. That's it. It's a fun, I'll tell you a funny story. One time, <laughs> this was actually just a couple years ago. It was right after I did my Cleopatra costume. I did it that day and I went straight to this woman's house because she wanted to pay me to do her makeup for Halloween. And she was one of these like insane clowns, like crazy scary clowns or whatever. And so all around her eye, like I, I did it from the example she showed me and all around the eye was black. She insisted on having these eyelashes. And I told her, oof, you might want to do those yourself because I don't really do eyelashes. She's like, you're a makeup artist, you don't do eyelashes? I was like, I just don't have good luck with eyelashes. But she kept insisting and sure enough, I pinched her eyelid into the, um, the tweezers that I was using to press on her lashes and her eyes were running after that. And like I told her, like <laughs> if a makeup artist tells you they're not gonna touch that, you should do it yourself. Just listen because they're telling the truth. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some blush on. Whoa, ba ba boom. And I'm gonna do a little contouring on my nose. Now her nose, I was kind of thin. I went down into a hook nose. 
and we'll see if we're going to do that. So I'm just going to contour a little bit on the sides of my nose. I'm going to use a brown color. I'll go with the Ulta palette. I'll put down in the description everything that I'm putting on, things that you will need to create this look. Even though it's regular makeup, you might want to just know like what ki kind of colors that I used. So I'll put that down below. In all of my videos, I'll put like specifics, where I bought things, how much they cost, how much the costume cost, if you want to check that out in the description below. I'm going with a lighter, I'm just going with do it with eyeshadow. I've been told to embrace the contouring, even though it's not, not really my thing. You know what I'm saying? I see these girls do it on, on my look so easy. It's not the type of girl that likes a lot of stuff on my face, you know what I mean? Some of these contours, they, they look like a Picasso when they're done. And I'm just like, uh, that's a lot of makeup that I don't really want to wear. <laughs> Do my simple stuff and it looks fine. So. I'm just doing this with an eyeshadow, so hopefully it'll kind of get the point across. I'm just blending it with my finger. You know, I do a lot of makeup now these days with my finger because I find that it blends better than any brush. Also, I have fingers. They're free. I don't have to pay for anything. I can just rinse them off when I'm done. It's a great thing. Makeup stuff's expensive. Not even just these days, it always has been. I have this nose and scar wax. I'm thinking of just giving her a little bit of a hook. We shall see. Now if I do do this, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna put glue on. Just because I'm not going anywhere. This is for you and for you alone. But if I was gonna go out, I might try and do this hook nose that she has. And I'm just taking this um, Ben Nye nose and scar wax, making it really thin on the ends, just like when we do the model magic. So it'll blend and I'll just smooth it on. Sometimes I don't like the nose and scar wax just because it's so freaking waxy. It wants to stick to everything but what you're trying to stick it to. So there's another way we can create that sort of appeal and it's by shadowing, shading with a black marker. That will give her that bit of a hook that we're looking for. You see what I mean? It immediately pointed that nose, gave her a bit of a hook. And we're just gonna Now all we need is a lip and put on our costume. And then we'll be done. I'm using a dark liner and going just inside my lip line. She didn't have big lips. Big lips were not the thing back then. I just went inside my lips, just to give me a little guideline. So I don't overdo it. Yes, Miss Mae West, she was only married once in her life. And that relationship was very short lived. And this was back when she was in vaudeville. She actually married a fellow vaudevillian named Frank something and didn't last very long, <laughs> as you probably could imagine. And she was never married again. I think she considered herself a free agent now, as sexualized as her character was and everything, I really doubt that she was super promiscuous, I think. She was just playing a role. But she loved the attention of the men. She always said, this is a man's world, I just know how to play their game. <laughs> In my opinion, she got more beautiful with age. As she got older, she bought up a lot of property, I believe in California. Um, but she kind of became reclusive in her older age. But at one point she was the highest paid actress during that six years from 1932 to 1938, around there. She actually could be credited with Cary Grant's career because they didn't believe in him. They actually let him go as a bit actor and she brought him on and said, I want him, you know? And one of her, uh, movies and he was actually in two films with her and he that's how he got his rise to stardom and if it wouldn't have been for Mae West he probably wouldn't have been 
Cary Grant. But she was much like some of these actors we know today who always play themselves. <laughs> Steve Buscemi and Morgan Freeman and even um, in her, closer to her time was um, Jane Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe. You know, all these, they were in, in different films and stuff, but they were always playing themselves. They were more or less typecasts for these certain roles. And, um, you know, they just who, they were who they were. Mae West passed away November 22nd in 1980. After being very reclusive for many years in her penthouse, which by the way was decorated all in white and gold and mirrors everywhere, including on the ceiling, because she liked to see how she's doing. But she was a very inspiring and beloved character, both in real life and on film. And I encourage you to watch her YouTube documentary. Once again, it's called Mae West and the Men Who Knew Her. Let's get dressed. Go. All dressed up and ready for photos. Why don't you come up and see me? you loved today's episode miss may west she was incredibly inspiring and inspired so many people like dita von Teese and betty page and all of these other burlesque entertainers were all inspired by her and her work if you choose to do may west for halloween this year you can go as may west and carrie grant or you can go as Mae West and even like John Wayne or anything like that. You can really play with Mae West. Like any male actor, very dapper looking, would be a great choice to pair with Mae West. Or you can just go as a bunch of bombshells from the early days if it's you and a bunch of girlfriends. One of you can be Mae West, one of you can be Marilyn Monroe, one of you can be Jane Mansfield. It would be just a fun little group get up. But I encourage you to watch the documentary because she was really an outstanding human being and a very unique individual. That does it for today's episode. If you haven't already, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video. And I'll see you next time.